Good afternoon from Hilton Coliseum in Ames, Iowa, on the campus of Iowa State University. It's Big 12 basketball on Big 12 now on ESPN Plus as Iowa State hosts Jackson State. Alongside former Iowa State forward Clay Edwards, I'm Brent Bloom. And Clay, both these teams looking to snap four-game losing skids. Jackson State on Thursday night lost to Bradley 83-60. to But they have a great guard in Tristan Jarrett, the preseason SWAC player of the year who can do the visiting. They do. Uh, Jarrett's a 6'4 uh, combo guard. Very active. He can shoot it from the three and he'll get to the paint. Um, he'll be a great test today for the Cyclones. Jared scored 22 points in that loss against Bradley on Thursday night. And for Iowa State, the Cyclones battled against West Virginia, coming up short 70-65. to 65. But Rajir Bolton proved he's one of the best guards in the Big 12. Absolutely. He had a beautiful 25-point performance against West Virginia. Took care of the ball at the same time. Four assists to zero turnovers. Um, so, again, the Cyclones are going to expect big things out of him today. Bolton played all 40 minutes against West Virginia on Friday night. A quick turnaround for Iowa State today. And the starting line for this afternoon's contest. First for the visiting Jackson State Tigers. Out of the SWAC, Ken Evans, Jonas James, Tristan Jarrett's the go-to player. The preseason SWAC player of the year, Darius Hicks. And in the middle, very talented Javius McKinnis. And for the Cyclones under head coach Steve Prohm, same starting five of the last three games. Jalen Coleman lands, Regier Bolton, Darlin Stone Dubar, David Johnson, and Solomon Young. The three officials as assigned by the Big 12 Conference. A-plus crew, if I say so myself. Doug Sermon, Chance Moore, and Amy Bonner. And Clay Edwards, it's a quick turnaround for Iowa State. The Cyclones arrived back in Ames on Saturday morning about 3 in the morning. A little walkthrough yesterday. Back at it here on noon on a Sunday. Yeah, that's, that's tough for them, but uh, one of the best things you can do is get right back at it after a tough uh, tough road game like that. The Cyclones battled 8th-ranked West Virginia to the wire. In fact, led for the majority of the second half for a late West Virginia surge, won it 70-65. to Cyclones glad to be back at Hilton Coliseum, trying to get back in the winning column today. Young and McKinnis to jump it up. Appreciate you joining us today on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. Tip controlled by Jackson State. The point guard is Jonas James, a Jackson, Mississippi native. Jackson State has really struggled on the offensive end, albeit against great competition. Turnovers have been their problem as Hicks rescues this possession. Yeah, Jackson State hasn't shot it real well from the perimeter yet this year. Um, their, their main scorer, Jared, has, has done an efficient job, but other than that, they've kind of struggled. The second possession as McKinnis tips the offensive rebound over to James. Yeah, for Jackson State, it's Jarrett, McKinnis, and then hope somebody else helps him out. Here's Hicks. His jumper misses, but McKinnis, the tip slam. That's where he lives off the glass with the tip dunk. If you look at Jackson State, they almost look like a miniature version of West Virginia with the two big, strong posts and then an efficient score on the perimeter. Young struggles in the paint, bothered by Hicks, and the rebound to Jackson State. Good start for the Tigers. It's Jarrett driving on Dubar, lost the ball to Iowa State. Much to the displeasure of Tristan Jarrett. He might have got fortunate there for Iowa State with, uh, without the foul called. Look at the athleticism by McKinnis. Known for his defense, but he's really stepped up his offensive game. But you get a lot of layups and dunks, the points will follow. Coleman lands to Dubar in the short corner. He just lost the ball. Jarrett running with James past Bolton, and he's fouled. To the free throw line, Jonas James, who spills hard to the Hilton Coliseum floor. Looks like James may have gotten raked, raked across the face here. Let's take a look at it. Oh, no, just a hard foul. And see if the officials will go to the monitor. I don't think Bolton obviously had any ill intent, but a hard f fall for James, who now goes over to the bench to, to get a little, little treatment. Let's get one more look. And again, Dubar just bobbles. And credit the speed by James to get past Bolton. And there was some contact there for sure. And they will go take a look. Yeah, it looks to me it was definitely below the head and neck level, maybe just under the right armpit there. Yeah, certainly not above the shoulders, which is usually the definition. However, it's not about intent. It's if it's, you know, overly aggressive act. And 
It's just going to be a common foul after the review. There's Chance Moore with the decision, but James a little worse for the wear. You can stop the bleeding to shoot these free throws, but Clay, you have to wonder, again, quick turnaround for Iowa State. It's been an odd start to the season. You jump from non-conference, play two conference games this week, and then back into non-conference against a team from the SWAC. It's definitely a lot different than historically how we, uh, teams go into the season, but you know, you got to show up every every day, uh, every game. You're going to get a lot of uh, one day offs. You just got to be prepared and ready to go. James at the free throw line, a 75% free throw shooter. The senior from Jackson. It makes the first. Jackson State. Expected to be one of the better teams in the SWAC this year. Iowa State already saw Arkansas Pine Bluff out of the SWAC in the season opener. Jackson State picked fourth in the SWAC. They returned some key pieces and expected to be a factor. Historically, year in and year out, they're one of the better defensive teams in the SWAC. Um, and we see already how active they are coming out in a 1 2 2 zone. Um, and they definitely have some dudes that look uh, Big 12 caliber with their physicality. Yep, they're going to switch up a lot of defense today. 4 nothing. Tigers lead it. Bolton for the Cyclones. Now Young, good position on McKinnis. Tough move, misses. Rebound to Jackson State. And controlled by Ken Evans. Just the start Jackson State wanted. They lost to Bradley on Thursday, 83-60. to Took the four-and-a-half-hour bus right over to Ames, and... They're on the road for the first seven this year. McKinnis, position on Blackwell, double comes. Cyclone. Now Jared a three, and buries it. A seven nothing start for Jackson State. Cyclone's coming out man to man, and Jackson State doing a good job of being patient, moving the ball. Iowa State turns to the senior Young. Young, a right-hand hook, got it. Stops the bleeding for Iowa State. Solomon Young on the board. Looks like Iowa State's made a concerted effort to get it into the paint to start this game and get, get the big senior uh, rolling offensively. And Young's been up and down in his senior season. Was very good against South Dakota State, but other times has not impacted the scoring column much, but an early two here. Better defensive urgency for Iowa State. Eight on the shot clock. Evans. Finds McKinnis cutting and lays it in. Javius McKinnis has four, and it's 9-2 Jackson State. Blackwell to an open Coleman lands, tees it up, and misses. Rebound to Hicks for the Tigers. That was a good look there for Coleman lands. A great job of the kick out on the, on the penetration. Just, just didn't get it to go down. Clay, a similar start to what we saw against Pine Bluff in the season opener against another SWAC opponent. Iowa State started very slow in that game. In fact, it's been a theme for Iowa State this year, the slow starts. It, it has been, and, um, you know, we saw the other night at West Virginia. We Iowa State came out, and they hung around for a while and then took the lead. Um, but, again, we Iowa State's not getting the shots to fall to start the game here and not a lot of defensive stops. Iowa State operating with Blackwell. Played 16 minutes down in Morgantown. Blackwell, a tough look. Not there. Over to Johnson. Johnson, a little discard from 16 feet. Blocked away. Bolton has to launch with one. And hits it. Rashir Bolton in his last three games, averaging almost 21 points, five assists, and shooting nearly 60% from the floor. So anyway, his mid-range mid game is fantastic. A steal by Blackwell, and he steps out of bounds. Could not keep the feet in, but good hustle by the Iowa State freshman. Takes us to a timeout. A less than ideal start for Iowa State, but Jackson State came ready to play off the right arm of Tristan Jarrett. Tigers lead it 9-4. to four. Slide one step is the ESPN app. Quick start for Jackson State. The Tigers lead Iowa State 9-4. This is the second ever meeting between the Cyclones and the Tigers. The other came back in December 
of 2002 with Iowa State winning that contest 85 to 63. Minnesota native Jake Sullivan scored 23 in that contest in what was an easy Iowa State victory. This is the second SWAC school Iowa State has played this year. Cyclones 30 and 0 all time against schools from the SWAC. But Jackson State leads it here 9 to 4. And Clay, they look the part. They do. They have some physical posts. I'm really impressed with uh, McKinnis so far. He, he's physical, strong, athletic, and he, he does what he does, and he does it well. Here he is here on Condit into the game for Iowa State. McKinnis backing in, tough runner, rims out, rebound to Javen Johnson for the Cyclones. Iowa State would love to get this game in transition. It's been at Jackson State's tempo, and Johnson lost the ball to Jackson State. Iowa State, two of six from the floor. Uh, let's take, take a second look. And mm -hmm. I don't see any contact from McKinnis. I think Doug Sermon's got that one right. I believe you're correct. And a turnover for Iowa State. See who can be the spark this afternoon for the Cyclones. Evans stepped on the sideline. That's a Jackson State turnover. Two turnovers apiece for Jackson State and Iowa State. Jackson State averaging 21 turnovers per game. That's the ninth worst in the nation. They've also been very foul prone, but it's a very aggressive defense for the Tigers. Now a 1-2-2 look for Jackson State. Bolton off a Condit screen. Johnson lost the ball. Second consecutive turnover for Iowa State. Yeah, Iowa State seems a little uh, out of sorts right now with that 1-2-2 that two, two zone. See if, uh, see if they go to penetrating gaps and kicking out more than uh, trying to the flares across the court. Zone defenses have given Iowa State a little bit of fits in this early season, and Jackson State mixing it up on the Cyclones. Jarrett on Coleman lands a deep three. Hits nothing out of bounds to Iowa State. And Clay, if you're Iowa State, you, you try to get it inside to Young. The, the three ball not exactly been efficient today. Where do you look against this pressure look, the zone pressure? Well, it looks like, uh, the, see the, low, the Big 12 logo there in the middle of the court in the lane uh, seems to be open. Uh, we don't have any, Iowa State doesn't have anybody filling that spot right now. But if we can either attack it off the dribble or get a b big to post up in there, it should open some, some things up. Condit draws the foul from Quinlan. Condit played more minutes in West Virginia and was a very, very effective. Four points, five rebounds, and a block. Good energy for the big man from Chicago. Earns early minutes in this contest. Also into the game for Iowa State is Tyler Harris. So Steve Prohm trying to push a couple different buttons. Get a Cyclones moving. Coleman lands a three and drills it. Jalen Coleman lands his 251st career three. It makes it a 9-7 Jackson State lead. Tate for Jackson State. A Quinlan drive. Gets past Blackwell, but the shot misses. Condit is fouled. And good position by George Condit. Foul called on the Tigers. Good look on the out-of-bounds play for Coleman Lance. Caught it in rhythm, rose up, and, and knocked it down. That's going to be key for Iowa State, finding who's going to be that number two, three guy behind uh, Rashir Bolton every night. Coleman Lands definitely has the ability to be one of those guys. His last three games, Coleman Lance has averaged three threes per game. And he's shot at a very good percentage in his young Iowa State career. Lance trapped. Over to Blackwell, drives, tough runner, good. Dudley Blackwell with some maneuvering in the paint, 9-9. Nine to nine. That was a tough shot, that little uh, circus there. But uh, there the, you saw him get that ball to the, the logo and attack. Jackson State runs offense with Zeke Quinlan, harassed by the pesky Harris. Now a three in the corner. Off the back iron, rebound to Condit for Iowa State. Bolton wants to run. 9-9, the Cyclones have scored seven straight.
15 on the shot clock. Bolton looking for a pick. Gets run from Condit. Pick and roll. Condit catches on the shorter. Quinlan drives. Reverse. No. Help side defense was good. And Jackson State forces the miss. I think on that one, you, you probably want to see uh, Condit just take it up same side instead of trying to make the shot more difficult. A good job by Condit there. Falls to the floor, forces the possession error to Iowa State. The Cyclones have used a lot of players in this early part of the first half. Condit seen the floor, so has Harris, Blackwell. And here comes Xavier Foster. Now Steve Prohm really utilizing his bench. I would guess with the short turnaround, trying to find a spark would be the reasoning. Exactly. There may be some tired legs there, and uh, the fresher you can keep them, the better for when this thing gets into the second half. Xavier Foster, some productive minutes the last three contests. Against high-level competition, encouraging signs for the freshman from Oskaloosa. Game tied at nine. Looks like Jackson State's uh, rolling man-to-man -man now. I think this may be the third different defense we've seen from them already in the first eight minutes. Young, good position, but the hook misses, and the rebound to McKinnis. McKinnis averages a double-double, 16 points, 11 rebounds. He is really quick off the floor. Interesting story. He was cut from his ninth-grade team, and here's a near steal by Bolton. Can he chase it down? He does. Inside to Young, who lays it in. Regier Bolton to Solomon Young, Iowa State's first lead of the contest. Looked like he thought that uh, deflection was going out of bounds at first and then realized it was staying in bounds and got after it. Great play by Bolton. James, a tough three. Out of bounds to Iowa State. Cyclone showing more urgency in that last few minutes. The steal by Bolton sets up Solomon Young. Iowa State leads it. 11-9 here at Hilton Coliseum. Jackson State jumped out to an early lead, but Iowa State on a 9-0 run over the last 440. Jackson State battle-tested. Their first three season, first three games of the season were canceled due to COVID, but they got the season started on December 8th. They've been on the road ever since, and they get conference play started play on January 2nd, but high-quality competition. They played both Mississippi and Ole Miss and a very good Bradley team out of the Missouri Valley. Yeah, it, it's just tough starting that many days on the road, travel after travel, but get to the second part of the season, it's – it's going to be a huge benefit for them. They're going to be battle-tested, like you said, and uh, ready to go for anybody they have in conference. Got some good things going down in Jackson, Mississippi. Of course, the head football coach at Jackson State now, Deion Sanders. Yeah, that's that's big time. That's exciting. And we were talking earlier, you know, he's uh, he, he got a couple of guys to flip the other day from SEC Powers, Florida, and Georgia. So exciting times down at Jackson State. Deep three for Bolton misses. And that position, possession was going nowhere for Iowa State. Now Coach Prime down there at Jackson State. It's the fourth largest college or university in the state of Mississippi. And that ball thrown away by the Tigers. Ken Evans with a turnover, and that has been the bugaboo for Jackson State. In this game and throughout this season, that's turnover number five for the Tigers. Jackson State back into the 1-2-2 the two, two zone again here. And I always say a lot of dribbling against this zone. Coleman lands with 15 on the shot clock. Finds Young. Good pos position over to Harris. A look from the left corner. Rebound tipped up and in by Xavier Foster. Got that 7-4 wingspan on it to tip it in. 13-9 Iowa State. That was good activity by the freshman there on the glass. Definitely used that length. Uh, he's by far the longest guy on the court right now. And a block by Regier Bolton. You got to wonder for Bolton how many minutes he will play today. Play the full 40 against West Virginia, but he appears to have the, mo the most juice of any Cyclone today. And Foster with a block on the inbound. As Foster's been active, but a foul called on Foster. 
Uh, Bolton's minutes remind me of uh, way back in the day when I played J.C. Holloway. <laughs> you you could never get that guy off the court, uh, but he was a great team leader, which uh, Rozier is also. You can tell Bolton really stepping into a leadership role for Iowa State. Jarrett's two free throws, first is good for the senior from Brownsville, Tennessee. Averages 16 points. Started his career at Kennesaw State in Georgia and found his way over to Jackson State. Has been effective since then. Jackson State has a nice mix of transfers on their team that really look to fill in well. 13-11, Iowa State leads it. And another look for Jackson State. Credit Wayne Brent for the multiple looks giving Iowa State problems. And a timeout called by Iowa State as Bolton was caught in a trap. And Clay, speak about that. When, you, when you're seeing a man look, then a zone look, then a trapping look, it just throws off your tempo. It does, and especially like we talked about earlier, Iowa State coming off a late road trip from West Virginia. Uh, really probably only got a, a short walk through practice in yesterday, so you can't, and it's still early in the season, so you, you have not had enough time to put in all your stuff for all these different looks. Um, so especially with the young team, it can, it can keep them on their heels and kind of second-guessing things for quite a bit. Iowa State's defense has been much better Jackson State has not made a field goal in the last seven and a half minutes. And I think this is the story. This is playing out a little bit as expected. Iowa State perhaps with some tired legs. And Jackson State, you know, has at times been good on offense, especially when McKinnis is dunking it. But they really labor from the three ball. In fact, this year, you know, shooting under 30% from three. And in the last three games, Jackson State just seven of 39 from three and when the shot's not going in, they've also been turnover prone, and Iowa State's taken advantage. Yeah, those are definitely two things that don't add up to winning games. But uh, defensive end, they're, they've, they've been very impressive. Coleman lands with a pump fake, got open. A little contact there. Foster gathers in the rebound and is fouled. Now Coleman lands. Shot was either deflected or came up well short, but Foster, the beneficiary. Might have got slapped hey. on the hand there but Foster there to clean it up and Xavier Foster to the free throw line 60% free throw shooter in his Iowa State career and makes the first Foster averaging four and a half points but he's had career highs in two of his past three games we didn't see him a whole lot for the season opener but you can tell the potential is there Exactly. You know, he was coming off some uh, concussion and some minor injuries. But, um, man, for somebody his size, his touch, shooting touch from the perimeter is fantastic. And as, as the strength comes along, he's just going to keep getting better and better. He's already got a great knack for blocking shots. Good drive by Jarrett. Gets past Young and lays it through. Tristan Jarrett showing his ability. He has seven. And it's back to a two-point game. More trapping defense for Jackson State. They get to steal with Jarrett. Flips it over, and a tough runner is up and in for Ken Evans, and this game is tied again. And a timeout for Iowa State and Steve Prohm. Jackson State causing havoc for Iowa State. Another steal. That's Jackson State's third. And Tyler Harris has caught no man's land here. Yeah, Jackson State's jumping into a three-quarter, one-two-two press there. Uh, the last thing you want to do is dribble the ball over the court, pick pick the dribble up, and then right into trap zone. Um, it looks like Coach Prohm's making uh, some adjustments, going to get Javen Johnson back in there, get a little bit more length so maybe you can see over the top of that press. Iowa State with one more non-conference game, and that comes against Chicago State Tuesday at noon and then it's a break and I think a well-deserved break for everybody involved it's been a tough fall semester with COVID so I would say it's about a 10-day break before Clay jumping in and oh you get you get Baylor right off the top <laughs> there there will be no easy nights in the Big 12 <laughs> this year uh, every every night's going to be a battle it is it is a stacked league from top to bottom 15-15 Iowa State and Jackson State the Tigers are hanging right in. And they've done this at times. They were down four at halftime to Mississippi State out of the SEC. And they're confident they are getting better as well. Bolton with 10 on the shot clock. 
Regier lost the ball. It's picked up by Jackson State and a possession arrow to the Tigers. And Bolton did not have a turnover against West Virginia, but picks up one here. Yeah, just super impressed by uh, Jackson State on the defensive end. They're active and physical, uh, making, making things really hard for the Cyclones. Jackson State runs offense. It's Evans in the post for McInnes. He's had some success against Young. Backs in, tough fall away, misses. And the rebound to Javen Johnson. Steve Prome has the left arm up saying run fellas run but Johnson struggles again with the ball and stays with Iowa State and Javens had a tough start to the afternoon a couple substitutions for Jackson State McClellan enters I think on Iowa State's end, we'd, they'd probably like to see the a, a little bit less dribbling out there on the perimeter, maybe try to advance the ball up the court on the fast break with the pass. Um, but those quick active hands of Jackson State's causing problems on the dribble. Young, a 17-footer, drops it down. Solomon Young, a little bit further out than we're used to seeing, but he calmly knocks it down, 17-15 Iowa State. Quick drive by Evans over the top of Young. Young bothers it, now running is Bolton, and he's fouled by McClellan. A good job by Solomon Young, knocks down the 17-footer and causing issues on the defensive end. Takes us to a timeout. Iowa State in front by two against a pesky group from Jackson, Mississippi. Iowa State leads at 17 to 15 over Jackson State alongside Clay Edwards. I'm Brent Bloom. The head coach for Jackson State is Wayne Brent. In his eighth season at Jackson State, he was hired out of Callaway High School in Jackson, Mississippi. Won a couple of state titles for Callaway High School before joining the Division I basketball ranks. But Clay, significant experience in D1, spent a lot of years at Mississippi. Exactly. So he's he's well familiar with the Power Five. Uh, basketball but you know reputation of being a defensive specialist and and we've definitely seen that on display here uh, in the first uh, 12 minutes of this game young is rejected by McKinnis the athletic McKinnis just sent that right back at Solomon young and Jackson State hanging around Cyclones lead it by two Jaden Walker into the game for Iowa State Cyclones still seeking a spark Barif Smith over to McClellan. A couple of the subs as well for Jackson State. This is McClellan baseline drive over to Jarrett. Jarrett's got to go with one blocked away by Coleman Lands, and that is a shot clock violation. Good defensive presence there for Coleman Lands. M much better team activity on the defensive end for Iowa State, that possession. Everybody moving their feet and talking. Um, very, very good deep team defense. And Clay getting Jaden Walker in there, another ball handler, and kind of a, a point guard look in there to move the ball against this trap. Exactly, and I remember him from the, the Pine Bluff game. Uh, he, he looked, he was active and long and um, looked like a nice young player for the Cyclones. Good footwork for Solomon Young. He has eight points to lead all scores. Iowa State up four. Walker showing pressure, but getting past him is James. Layup misses. Rebound to Jackson State and Bereef Smith. McKinnis on Young. A couple of strong bodies. That, that's a great matchup. Both, both of those guys are active, strong. Nice board. Now Walker showing some athleticism. Johnson, a hesitation move, goes baseline, but lost the ball to Jackson State. Turnover number six for Iowa State. And Johnson, a good initial move, but then caught between McKinnis and James. 
Looked like he got tripped up a little bit there, but I, I, I kind of feel like he's uh, forcing things off the dribble just maybe a little too much. And needs to let it come come naturally through uh, through the motion offense. McKinnis holds for Jackson State. Under six minutes left in the first half. Been a defensive-minded slugfest. Wilson works a pick and roll with James. Three to go. James, a left-hand runner, comes up empty in the rebound to Coleman Lands. Coleman lands all the way down the paint, but misses the easy one. On the doorstep and does not finish. And Jackson State, you know, if you can be in control of tempo, they certainly are. Yeah, they, they Long, look. A steal by Walker. A run out. Showtime for the freshman, but he just lays it in. Jaden Walker with a burst. A steal to lay in for the freshman from the Atlanta area, the lead up to six for Iowa State. And the long arms of Jaden Walker. You can definitely see where uh, as he matures and, and gets better, he is going to be a problem on the defensive end for a lot of teams. Uh, a long physical guard, um, good quickness and anticipation. He, he'll, he'll, he'll turn into a fantastic defender. And still rounding into form, missed a lot of time with that leg injury, suffered as a senior in high school, but that, that's exactly what the staff loves about Jaden Walker. They have that, you don't want to toss it out just generally, but the Tyrese Halliburton effect on the defensive end with that long 6'5 frame. Absolutely, and he looks to be a little more uh, physical than maybe Tyrese was at this point, um, but yeah, a huge upside. Yeah, already almost 200 pounds. Tyrese still isn't there <laughs> as he's uh, making a living out in Sacramento. Iowa State showing a little bit of uh, four-court pressure here. Yeah, Dubar back in the game. So Iowa State with a couple of freshmen and Walker and Dubar to go along with Coleman Lands, Young, and Bolton. A near travel by Evans. He's being pestered by Dubar. Now Walker causing problems and near turnover for Jackson State. Love the activity for Walker. Up top and missing is Jackson State and the rebound to Bolton. Tell you what, Young has been really uh, contesting a lot of shots, making it tough for Jackson State when they get into the paint. He did such a nice job on Friday night against the Bigs for West Virginia. Sets the screen for Bolton here. Dubar out of bounds. Got to go after that one with two hands. Make sure you secure the catch. But going back to that West Virginia game, uh, you're absolutely right. Young battled well. I was also impressed with uh, Darling Stone Dubar. Um, he was matched up with Culver and Shibwe quite a bit. Um, two big physical guys. And uh, for a freshman, uh, he, did, he did a nice job on them. Looks like Tristan Jarrett has a cut on the left elbow. Give him 30 seconds to clean that up. It's a six-point Iowa State lead, and really the defense has been outstanding for Iowa State after the initial four minutes. Jackson State two of its last 15, and the Tigers have not scored in five minutes. However, the offense is not exactly a sight to behold for Iowa State. Cyclone shooting 45%, but the possessions have been long, and then the turnovers have caused some problems. I'm sure Jackson State uh, thinks if they can keep this this game in the 50s or low 60s, uh, that gives them a great shot of winning. Uh, so they're going to be patient. Evans misses, and the rebound to Walker for Iowa State. Now, Clay, you have to be comfortable watching this. This is Tim Floyd era basketball <laughs> right here. This is very similar. Yes, it is. <laughs> Young between the circles. Now Bolton. Good job by Jackson State to trap. Young backing in on Hicks. Right hand good. Solomon Young has 10. The Cyclones glad to have the senior from Sacramento. Eight-point Iowa State lead its largest. That's got to make Coach Prome feel great that uh, the big man's being active inside and the Iowa State's playing inside out tonight. Bolton all over James in a five-second call. Great urgency for Razier Bolton causes the turnover. 
That's what Iowa State wants to see out of its junior leader in Rajir Bolton. Iowa State now up eight on Ch Consistently clear skin delivered to your door. It's a bit of a grinder here at Hilton Coliseum, but Iowa State leads Jackson State 23 to 15. There's Iowa State head coach Steve Prohm. And Iowa State is hopeful to get sophomore guard Trey Jackson back sometime in the next 10 to 14 days, Clay Edwards, and he would really help this Iowa State team from a leadership standpoint, and then also another ball handler and a shooter. Absolutely, it would be a huge boost to the Cyclones. You know, they start uh, conference play with Baylor, Texas, and Texas Tech, three guard heavy teams. Um, and his shooting ability and his, his defensive ability would, would be much needed for the Cyclones. Again, perhaps back for that Baylor game, it's probably gonna be somewhere in that window when Trey Jackson's back wearing an Iowa State uniform. has been missed this entire season with a knee injury. Six on the shot clock here. Here comes Walker, who lost the ball. And the steal by McInnes in Jackson State. Walker, with extensive minutes in this first half, has played six minutes, a couple of points, a couple of rebounds, and a steal. McInnes on Young. Double from Dubar, but finds a cutting Hicks, but a block on the help side by Coleman Lands. Bolted, nowhere to go, heaves it up, and the rebound to the Tigers. Tough tough shot there by uh, Bolton. Like to see a little bit more patience maybe on, on that end. A near steal by Dubar, and Iowa State, you know, after giving up nine points in the first three minutes, has allowed just six points in the last 15. They're doing a great job of contesting everything in, in the paint. Uh, no, no easy shots at this point. This has to be, as, as a player, a, a tough contest, coming back out of a top 10 game on the road in conference play, and then this one squeezed in in the non-conference. Yeah, absolutely, and the, the long plane ride on, on top of it. Um, but you always like getting on the court and playing, so as a player, you, most of the time you like to be in games rather than practicing when you maybe have tired legs. Iowa State forces another Jackson State turnover. The turnover adding up for the Tigers. And they have not scored in over seven minutes. Coleman lands a three, rims out. Dubar fights with McInnes, but it's McInnes grabbing the board. And Jackson State content to run clock. Backdoor cut, Jarrett roams free and lays it in. Tristan Jarrett has nine. Great cut there by Jarrett into the open lane. Um, Iowa State just late getting there on uh, help side defense. Tough take for Coleman Lands is fouled and gets free throws. Foul called on Bereef Smith. And the free throw line for Jalen Coleman Lands. We've seen Coleman Lands be mainly a spot up shooter, but he's got a little bit off the dribble game. Yeah, and that's something he'll have to keep doing throughout the year as people uh, start scouting him and knowing that he's setting up for the three-point shot because a lot of guys are going to be sprinting at him to take away that three. These are his first free throw attempts in an Iowa State uniform. It makes the first. Impressive young man. It's been well documented, but has founded a company. He's also founded a nonprofit, and he's currently getting his master's in management information systems in the Ivy College of Business, and that's no joke. It makes both free throws. 25-17, Iowa State lead. That's, that's really amazing. His time management skills <laughs> must be on point. <laughs> just a super neat kid and a great leader for this Iowa State program. You wish you could get him for more than just this year, but he is making his mark on this young roster. A tough take, misses, and the rebound to Coleman lands. Eight-point Iowa State lead. Coleman lands and an offensive foul called. A little bit of a hook there, trying to get to the middle of the paint. He got that off arm out ahead of him and called for an offensive foul. Yeah, just enough yeah. of a discard. Under a minute left in this low-scoring first half. I think Jackson State thinks they've uh, found something with that's two possessions in a row they've uh, back cut. A deep three by Tate off the front iron, but chased down by Jackson State, then Bolton strips it free. 
Regier one on three. He loses it. Nobody wants the basketball. <laughs> Up top to McKinnis, and it bounces oh, in. Oh, my. Off of two hands into the basket. Look what I found. 25-19. I'm not for sure if that was Young or McKinnis that knocked that in, but it was bouncing around quite a bit. Cyclones hold for the last shot. Bolton, hand check, and a foul called on Bereef Smith. That is only the sixth team foul on Jackson State. Second foul on Bereef Smith, who spent last year in Boone at DMAC. Officials have let them play quite a bit this uh, this first half because both teams have been playing physical basketball, but we're only up to nine total fouls. A great point. What does Iowa State diagram here with 4.3? Got to think they'll try to get Bolton off of some kind of maybe staggered screen or see if they can get him a quick open three or attack the rim. Walker throws it to Bolton. He's in trouble with two. Bolton doesn't get it off. And that is a microcosm of the first half. A steal at the end by Evans, and that takes us to halftime. It was certainly not aesthetically pleasing. Iowa State leads it thanks to its defense. 25 to 19 at the break. Clay and I back with your halftime stats. We will return on Big 12 now. Time here at Hilton Coliseum alongside former Iowa State Cyclone Clay Edwards. I'm Brent Bloom, and Iowa State leads it over Jackson State 25 to 19. It was a first half in Jackson State's tempo and dominated by defense. Percentage not awful for Iowa State, but only getting 23 shot attempts in a half is not ideal for Iowa State. They'd prefer a more up tempo ball game and Jackson State is controlling that but the Cyclones credit to them are showing some toughness at least on the defensive end Clay Edwards. They are. Uh, Iowa State struggled a little bit with uh, the multiple defenses that Jackson State's thrown out there. Uh, bottom line in this game though um, 20 combined turnovers yeah. between the two teams. I think Jackson State has to feel fortunate they're only down six. They shot it at 27 percent. Uh, to go along with those nine turnovers. So they got to feel kind of good that they're still into this in this game. And if you're Steve Froman in that halftime locker room, how do you get your team to maybe move a little bit more on offense, or is it really just a case if Jackson State wants to play it this slow, there's not a whole lot you could do to change that? Uh, Jackson State's a great defensive team, but um, I, I think once, we, once Iowa State does get down on the offensive end, they got to know that Jackson State's going to be in front of them and make it tough, so they have to use some patience and not try to force things off the dribble so much. Well, it certainly was a memorable evening in Hilton Coliseum many, many years ago, and Professor Tom Crochelle took a look at took a look back at a memorable night in Hilton Coliseum. And this Cyclones one. Happiness is what makes us happy. Iowa State leads it. At halftime, 25 to 19 against Jackson State. And Clay Edwards will take a quick look at those halftime highlights. And Jackson State started quickly with this dunk from McKinnis, and he was impressive in the first half. He was, and that's kind of what we expected from McKinnis, being active and physical on the offensive glass. Iowa State eventually got some things going on offense, and Regier Bolton hustle on both the offense and the defensive end. And also the Cyclones got Solomon Young involved. Really good first half for Solomon Young, uh, leading uh, Iowa State with 10 points, 5 for 9 from the field. Um, getting those paint touches is key for Iowa State. And the turnovers on both ends, 20 combined turnovers. Credit this one layup by Evans off the steal. But Young continued to work. He's in double figures, as mentioned, with 10. And a nice steal and run out for the freshman, Jaden Walker. Both sides uh, had defense lead to offense and get some easy buckets for him. Uh, well, we expect to see that some more in the second half. Cyclones lead it at halftime, 25 to 19. Back with the second half from Hilton Coliseum on Big 12 Now. Welcome 
Welcome back to Hilton Coliseum. Brett Bloom alongside Clay Edwards. Iowa State leads Jackson State 25 to 19. This one more non-conference tune-up. Iowa State plays another non-conference game on Tuesday against Chicago State, but then back into Big 12 play once we turn the calendar to 2021. And Clay, we thought it would be a loaded Big 12. And if this short non-conference and an end of conference play has meant anything, it has appeared that that has been the case. Absolutely. Uh, looking, at, looking at those standings, I think three of those guy, teams are uh, top 10 in the country right now, and Texas keeps inching up and up as they've been playing really well. Um, again, the freshman for Oklahoma State, Kate Cunningham, continues to impress. Um, just a, it's, a, it's a grinder of a schedule in the Big 12. The Cyclones dropped two non-conference game, or two conference games last week to K-State and West Virginia. But Iowa State showed some progress, I think, from Tuesday night to Friday night against West Virginia. But the next game on the schedule in Big 12 play is Baylor on January 2nd. And Iowa State could certainly use the services of some of those guys in the NBA. And what a story it is for the Cyclones as the NBA begins this week. Tyrese Halliburton has been turning some heads. I saw one NBA draft or NBA expert said he's his pick for the rookie of the year this year and he's a steal for the Kings and it's like yeah we could have told you that yeah. <laughs> if you just watch the guy but uh, currently those are those are the guys currently on NBA rosters and then Deontay Burton and Nazmi Trulong looking to see what is next from for them but Clay last year when the season started Iowa State had eight players in the NBA and that was the 10th most of any college in the country That's Kentucky it. led the way with 28 as you would might expect but you know, Tyrese Halliburton could be a junior. Taylor Horton Tucker could be a junior. And Taylor Horton Tucker's been going nuts for the Lakers. And, and, and you can throw in Lindell Wigington right. there, too. He'd be a senior. Uh, you know, he's, he's been playing well himself. But, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Halliburton and Horton Tucker have been kind of the, the hot names this preseason in the NBA. Both are, have been performing fantastically and um, just really a cool thing to see. No question. It only helps things going forward if those guys continue to have success in the NBA. And anytime LeBron James is tweeting about you as Taylor Horde Tucker's a pretty neat deal, there's some expectation he will be in that Lakers rotation, be a significant piece. I, I read the other night some, uh, uh, I, I'm not for sure who it was, but an NBA um, reporter was, he thought he'd average 12 to 13 off the bench for the Lakers this year, which would be huge for both the Lakers and Taylor. To think he just turned 20. So yeah. he would be a young junior if he was still on Iowa State's campus. But great to see those fellas having great success in the NBA. And Iowa State opens with possession. And Rajir Bolton. Jackson Bolton. State coming out man-to-man -to, -man to start. Right into Young and a foul called on McKinnis. Just his first foul, which is a good sign for Jackson State, as McKinnis has been in some foul difficulty as of late. Coleman lands a long two and hits it. Jalen Coleman lands, has seven. And it's an eight-point Iowa State lead. James for the Tigers. Strolls down the paint, swatted away by Young. Again, Solomon Young's been really active in the paint, contesting shots. Um, that's, that's a big thing for the Cyclones tonight. McKinnis over Dubar, lays it up and gets his own follow, but no. That'll be basket interference. So McKinnis a little too quick to jump. Good effort by McKinnis. A violation nonetheless. Johnson a three from the corner. Jackson State wants to run. Numbers with James. That's something we didn't say a whole lot no, in the first half. That is correct. <laughs> Hicks on Johnson. Tough move. Rebound to Bolton for Iowa State. And Rajir Bolton gets rebound number five. He's in a hurry down the paint. He lost the ball. Stolen by James. And now Jared on a run out. Gets past Johnson and misses. Rebound Coleman lands. Looked like he was expecting a little more contact there. and yeah, Just pushed it a little too hard off the board. A little more up-tempo in this early second half. Young, a post move, right hand hook. Dubar keeps it alive. Both sides are really making a concerted effort to get it down low, start this second half. Bolton trapped, gets it off to Dubar. 
Dubar a runner. Rebound tipped up. Another chance for Young. Young a right hand, good. And a timeout for Iowa State and Steve Prohm. Iowa State, a little volleyball in the post, but Young converts. He has 12 points. And we have an injured James underneath the basket. Not sure what happened to James, but Young converts. We take a timeout. We'll check on James when we come back on Big 12 Now. Iowa State has stretched the lead to 10 points and taking a look at Jonas James, who was helped off during that timeout and play. Didn't see what happened in live action. Let's see if we can get a second look. James number three. It looks like he just got rolled up on by Darlington Dubar. Yeah, a little hyperextension of the knee there. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. He'd he, he been playing well, but um, yeah, that's painful. Had some help walking to the bench. And James, the senior from Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, started the second half of last year and started every game this year and hope that, that young man will be just fine. Jackson State struggles to get it in, but does so. And now running the point is Ken Evans. Evans, a freshman also from Jackson. Over to Bereef Smith. Jarrett's been held in check for the most part. A jumper by Hicks. The rebound high for Coleman Lands. Cyclones have just been nails on the defensive end since the early part of this game. Bolton's done a really good job on Jared. Limited, he's only at seven, seven shot attempts at this point. So it um, says a lot when uh, your best offense, offensive player is also locking down the, the best shooter on the other team. Dubar a spin move in the paint goes. Good move for the freshman from Charlotte. And Iowa State has the lead up to 12. Yeah, Jarrett's done it against high-level competition. Scored 20-plus in a couple of different outings this year. Bereef Smith's three misses, and the rebound to Bolton. Bolton leads Iowa State in rebounding and for the season. Also today, that's a sixth. He is a, a do-it-all player. Johnson drives and is hip-checked by Bereef Smith. You know, watching the West Virginia game the other night, um, Bolton brought to mind to me it's gonna this is gonna date me a little bit but I, I got the feeling of a Joe Dumars type player you know the great mid-range uh, pull-up jumper sure. but he'll go on the other end and he'll rebound he'll guard the best player on the other team um, just kind of a glue guy but at a high efficiency yeah, the numbers Bolton is putting up in this season I mean they really are incredible as Johnson a tough two goes he's a tough shot maker Javen Johnson on the scoreboard for the first time today, and Iowa State leads 33-19. Called a two for now, they may take a look at it. Evans on Bolton. Now Bolton for Iowa State is the only player in college basketball averaging 15 points, six assists, five rebounds, and two steals. As McInnes gets one to go for Jackson State. Coleman lands into Young. A cutting Dubar. Runs over Jarrett. An offensive foul called. Now Tristan Jarrett stepped in front just in time, and the charge called on the Iowa State freshman. Yeah, it was a great look by Young there. Um, just good defense. Yep. Jarrett got there and uh, sacrificed his body against uh, the big freshman. Interestingly for Regier Bolton today, only two points after scoring 25 against West Virginia, but he's been content to be a playmaker and a rebounder today. That rebound tipped to Jackson State stays alive for Evans. I'm sure with uh, Coach Brent's defensive acumen, uh, his focus today was probably taking Regier away. Evans gets past Bolton. Young there, but a foul called. They got Bolton, and it should be free throws for Jackson State. That takes us to a break. Iowa State leads it over Jackson State, 33-21. Vation in overdrive. Iowa State led it by six at halftime, now leads it by 12 over Jackson State. 
And Jackson State expected to be a contender in the SWAC this year. Picked fourth out of the 10-team conference. Iowa State played Arkansas Pine Bluff in the season opener. The class of the league, though, probably Texas Southern and head coach Mike Davis. Remember, might remember Mike Davis was the head coach at Indiana, followed Bob Knight. And now at Texas Southern and very talented roster for Texas Southern. But impressed from what we've seen, Clay, uh, from Jackson State this afternoon. I, I have been, again, on the defensive end. And, and something to note on their season last year, they, they ended the year with a five-game win streak. They really had it rolling there at the end of the year. Uh, won their first round tournament game. Um, so they, they probably had a good opportunity to win that tournament and make an NCAA tournament. Evans makes the first free throw and gets a second. And interesting to see for Iowa State, both Coleman Lands and Razier Bolton have played every single minute in this game. Probably like to get those guys a little bit of a rest if Iowa State can grab firmer control of this game. 11-point Cyclone lead, 15-40 left in the second half. Jackson State again switching up defense here. Going back to the 1-2-2 that caused the Cyclones a little bit of problem in the first half. Bolton gets into the teeth of the defense and throws it away. I think Johnson was looking for the lob and said got the bullet, and it goes out of bounds. That was the right way to att attack the zone, um, attack the gap, get into the middle, and have a cutter. Just uh, couldn't execute on the pass. But Jackson State has really labored on offense. Just 13 points in the last 22 minutes. Jackson State led this game 9-2 at the 17-07 mark. But a good move here, but a block by Young. Not so fast, Mr. Evans. And here comes Razier Bolton. Solomon Young's just been fantastic on the back end of the defense tonight. A three by Javen Johnson. What a flurry for Iowa State in the lead up to 14. Johnson has five. Yes, yeah, Solomon Young on the defensive end, one of his best games in an Iowa State uniform. Has him with four blocks right now, and he's probably uh, made it difficult and contested on another four on top of that. A turnover for Jackson State. They challenged Solomon Young after the first couple of games to just be more physical. And considering what he did Friday night against the bigs of West Virginia, and then again this afternoon, you know, he's only 6'8", but Solomon Young has that 7'1 wingspan, which sometimes it's hard to calculate. Exactly, and... And his legs do not look like they have any jet lag from uh, the West <laughs> Virginia trip right now. He's, he's getting way above the rim on those blocks. Dubar has been a good driver. Out to Coleman Lands. Right corner three. No. Uh, Coleman Lands, one of four from downtown. That was good offensive again, getting it into the middle of the paint. Just, uh, just couldn't, couldn't knock down the shot. Coleman Lands peels off the rebound and running. Gets a screen by Young to a cutting Dubar, but an offensive foul called. And I think Coleman lands just a bit out of control. Tried to Euro step past the defender, but could not get past him in time. A little bit of yeah, movement there, too, movement there. by Darian Wilson. And that, this was something uh, the other night against West Virginia. I think there were four charge calls in, um, against Iowa State in that game, too, and also the same way. Um, Brent, I know you're an ex expert on <laughs> officiating. Uh, do you think they're they're calling the charges automatically it, a little too easily? It certainly seems that way, that whenever it's a 50-50 question, the benefit has gone to the def defense. But interestingly, in, in that game against West Virginia, Clay, Iowa State had a 37-9 foul discrepancy as a foul called here on Iowa State on cue. 37-9 against West Virginia and still was in that game right to the end and actually outshot on the free throw line 29 to 11 yeah, in Morgantown. That is uh, amazing that they are still there right at the end. Um, and it's something that's plagued Iowa State all year so far. Um, t tonight, free throw comparison is, um, you know, five for six for Jackson State and four for four for Iowa State. You'd like to get to the line more, but um, kind of the old saying is you, you want to make more than uh, the other team attempts. And it, it definitely helps in getting a win at the end of the night. What's that old Tim Floyd? That is an old Tim Floydism. Ism. And you guys, you did that. And Kenny Pratt shot so many free throws. It, it was amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And we would, uh, Coach Floyd would actually teach, like, when we're out there 
defending on the perimeter, we would be yelling during the game, hands off, hands off, hands huh. off, just to keep it in your mind and the official's mind. That's the thing is that can be, it's actually a skill to defend without fouling. Absolutely. And both free throws good for Jackson State. Lead at 12 for the Cyclones. But the reason why the free throw is so important, obviously the percentage is, is much more efficient, but it's also, you know, drought proof. You get to the line a lot. You're not going to get beat on extended runs. Here's a Johnson three that misses. Foster tips the rebound into the hands of Jackson State. But James, good to see him back in the game, by the way. Lost it out of bounds. Absolutely. Um, Iowa State's really battling on the offensive glass tonight. Uh, they're a lot more active than maybe some of the games we've seen up to this point. Bolton inbounds. And a five-second violation on the inbound. I think Walker was open in the corner, but Bolton didn't spot it. And a turnover for the Cyclones. Turnover number 16 for Iowa State. A few too many for Steve Prohm's liking. 13-15 to play in the second half. Cyclones lead it by 12. Deep three for Jarrett. Dubar chases it down, has Walker up ahead, but throws it away. And Iowa State wanted a deflection, but Doug Sermons, Amy Bond are not buying it. Iowa State's really making a, an effort to increase the pace of this game, but, but they have to take care of the ball. 17 turnovers at this point. Um, you know, there was... 20 combined at, at halftime. Jackson State seemed to eliminate theirs with only one to this point. But, um, yeah, i got to take care of the ball. Bereef Smith one-on-one -on -one with Johnson. And a moving screen called on Bereef Smith. And the offensive struggles continue now. No field goals for Jackson State in the last four minutes. And it has really continued since the 17-minute mark of the first half. Certainly a defensive-minded contest this afternoon. Here's Johnson in the paint. Out to Bolton with the left hand, blocked by McInnes, but a foul called. And poor Jonas James was trampled on underneath the basket. This can't buy a break, but free throws for Regier Bolton. Man, you're six-footer in there. You're just, you can't, can't catch a break. That Tell you what, uh, Rashir Bolton does a great job of hanging in the air on his, uh, when he gets to the paint. Getting in there between the trees and you gotta be a little bit creative. 80% free throw shooter. It makes the first free throw. He is shooting 70% from two point range, which is incredibly efficient for a guy of his size. He's not getting a lot of layups and dunks, but no, that's I, certainly a part of his game. Yeah, like we talked about a little bit earlier, his his pull-up game, um, coming hard and pulling up off one dribble, those are those are not easy shots, and, and he is masterful at, at completing those. Tate holds the pivot foot. Evans on Harris. Harris hasn't played a whole lot of minutes in this one. Evans on Harris, a 14-footer, misses everything. Out of bounds to Jackson State. Last touch by Xavier Foster. Jackson State shooting 20% from the floor. It's an offense that was shooting 36% coming in. Zeke Quinlan, the transfer from Montana State. Good defense by Harris. Forces a tough runner. I don't think that hit the rim, but nonetheless, it'll count on the follow. Must have. Two straight offensive rebounds for Jackson State there. Um, kind of unfortunate bounces for Iowa State, but uh, still got to be active and check off. And a zone look for Jackson State. Bolton's had it the entire possession. Jackson State just kind of keeps hanging around here. A long three for Rajir Bolton buries it. Lead back up to 14. Bolton has six. Walker gets the assignment on Jarrett. Gets past him. Foster there to help. Makes it a difficult shot. Now a run out for Harris, but thrown away. 
Intercepted on the backside by Tate. I think the big guy had the right idea there. We, Iowa State had a run out, but uh, just, just poor execution on the pass. Jarrett puts the head down. Flips in for McKinnis, who's fouled at counts. Some of the best offense for Jackson State of the day. As the two veterans, Jarrett finds McKinnis. He'll head to the free throw line when we come back. Bolton's three. Had Iowa State up 14. Now it's 40-28 Cyclones. Brent Bloom and Clay Edwards back at Hilton Coliseum. Appreciate you joining us on Big 12 now. A free throw upcoming for McKinnis. AP top 10. Saw Gonzaga knock off Iowa yesterday in a high-scoring contest. But there's that Big 12 representation. Baylor, Kansas, West Virginia, all in the top 10. Brent, I got a, I got a chance to watch a little bit of that uh, Gonzaga-Iowa game yesterday. And... Gonzaga's offensive efficiency is just amazing. The pressure they put on defenses, um, just loaded with talent at all five positions. And there's some confusion as McKinnis makes the free throw, but Duck Sermons, the official, did not realize it was only a one-shot foul. <laughs> so he will allow the inbounds. <laughs> it's Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Happens to the best right. of us, right? <laughs> Doug Sermons has worked multiple Final Fours. And they get that corrected. The lead at 11, 40 to 29. Blackwell for Iowa State. Re-enters the contest. And a lot of offense in that Iowa Gonzaga game. Not so much here. But defense has been strong for the Cyclones. And Jackson State. Iowa State has 18 turnovers. Walker, a quick move into Young. What a setup. Jaden Walker with a little sizzle. Yeah, fantastic handles there from the freshman to get into the paint. And beautiful look to, to Young. Yeah, this is as aggressive as he has been in his Iowa State career. And away from the ball, McKinnis called for the off-arm displacement. And Iowa State has possession. A little crossover there, and then the awareness to find Young, who has 14. Tight, low, hard crossover. That was impressive. Well, Hicks checks in for McKinnis. That's the third foul on McKinnis, so he'll take a brief break, and obviously it's kept him in check for the most part. Does have 11. Does the big man for Jackson State. Blackwell charges in, and the rebound to Hicks, who fights off Young. Iowa State's led by as many as 14. Quinlan to a deep Jarrett three over Walker. A battle for the rebound, controlled by Quinlan, who goes up, blocked away by Blackwell, but a foul called. And Zeke Quinlan goes to the free throw line. Again, Jackson State being active on the offensive boards. Uh, this is a handful of times now in the second half. To, they've gotten second shots and look to convert. Quinlan from Beaverton, Oregon. Spent his first couple of years at Montana State. And then enrolled at Jackson State this spring. Makes the first free throw. Started a couple games as Quinlan in his Tigers career. Jackson State still hanging around the lead at 12 with another free throw upcoming. Rebound to Young for Iowa State. Interesting lineup for Iowa State with four guards in Solomon Young. And Walker, Walker and Coleman Lance, Harris and Bolton. So this is a, a look we have not seen all season. Walker to Harris, a three. Misses. Jackson State corrals it. Harris gets the assignment on Jarrett. Iowa State's been mixing uh, mixing that assignment up a little bit here in the second half. Coleman Lands has had him, Bolton, now Tyler Harris. He's got a little bit of a height discrepancy, but the rebound to Walker High to get it, and he lost it as it's poked free, but a foul called on Jackson State. And very impressed with the bounce. 
of Jaden Walker on that rebound. You know, had that significant leg injury, but starting to see some signs for what Jaden Walker could become. Uh, absolutely, and he's physical on the rebound there, uh, going up against Jackson State's big man. Um, good signs from the freshman. Well, I'm curious, you know, with Young being the only post player, they have Walker basically as that either three or four man in there right now with Bolton, Harris, and yeah, Lance. Yeah, he'd definitely be the second biggest guy on the court for Iowa State. Um, just a good all-around game out of the freshman. Uh, Six team foul on Jackson State. Iowa State in the bonus on the next one. Iowa State runs a set with Bolton. Top 16-footer off the front iron and the rebound to Quinlan. Rebound up and in. No, followed by Quinlan. No, this third tip, no good. It's a scrum, and Coleman lands, and Quinlan fight for it. Possession arrow to Jackson State. That looked like something you might see in the Fiesta Bowl here in a little bit. The announcement just came down. That's where the Cyclones are heading on the football field. That game's on January 2nd, and the opponent is Oregon. So what a season that continues for Matt Campbell Cyclones. A New Year's Six Bowl invitation to meet the Oregon Ducks. Inside is Tate. His layup is up and in. 42-32 as Jackson State cuts to 10. Nice inbounds play there. Uh, may have got away with a little push off to get, get that open, but um, execution other than that was pretty good. That's exciting news for the Iowa State football team, a big-time bowl and, you know, another national uh, well-known team to compete against. That game January 2nd at 3 o'clock Iowa time. Bolton gets a screen from Young. With three on the shot clock, Young with one. His shot, no good. Coleman Lands follows with the left hand. Get up, Mr. Coleman Lands. 12-point Iowa State lead. Impressive follow from the senior there. He was skied for that board with the left hand. Jarrett gets Young up in the air. He's fouled and goes to the free throw line. So Jackson State responds. Free throws for Jarrett when we return. Iowa State 44, Jackson State 32 on Big 12 now. Iowa State leads it over Jackson State 44-32 along with Clay Edwards. I'm Brent Bloom and just found out the news. Iowa State headed to the Fiesta Bowl to meet the Oregon Ducks January 2nd, 3 o'clock kick. What an opportunity for Iowa State to make a New Year's Six Bowl game. Cyclones end up finishing 10th in the college football playoff standings. And well-deserved road trip for that squad. And just an incredible, incredible season continues. Absolutely, just a fantastic season. Uh, you know, start the season off with a, a kind of a rough one um, and to stick with it and as Coach, Coach Campbell likes to say, trust the process. And, uh, you know, the process re re rewarded them throughout the year. Jared makes the free throw. It was a, a tough Iowa State locker room. A lot of sadness in there yesterday down there in Arlington. But the prevailing theme was we just want to play one more game with our guys. We're brothers, and we can't wait to get out there one more time. And Iowa State gets the chance to do that in a New Year's Six Bowl game in Glendale, Arizona. Unfortunately, can't have everything in 2020. No fans allowed at the Fiesta Bowl this year. Walker, baseline drive and a foul called on Quinlan. But players, families, and friends are allowed to go to the Fiesta Bowl. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of folks trying to get to be family and friends with the Iowa State <laughs> roster in the next 10 days. As Walker gets a one and one opportunity. You know, as we're talking football here, uh, Jackson State keeps hanging around in this game. Uh, their defense keeping them, keeping them in it. Yep. Walker misses the front end of the one and one. It's only a 10 point game. And here is Jarrett in the paint, lays it up, misses, follow no. Young finally wrestles it away. And the Cyclone's not comfortable here as Johnson called for the charge and the turnovers continue for Iowa State. Number 19 in this game. Cyclones took care of it so well in Morgantown, but Jackson State 
has just caused problems all day. And good job there by Tate Jr. stepping in front. Yeah, just just a little bit of uh, trying to force it too much off the dribble in traffic. Jackson State does a uh, fantastic job of getting their body in front of uh, penetrators and drawing those charges. Good position by McKinnis. Comes up short. Rebound. Walker dives for it, but it's Jarrett winning the battle. He calls a timeout. And there's some juice to the Jackson State sideline as Jarrett gets another possession for the Tigers and 20 on the shot clock. And credit Wayne Brent's Tigers. They've lost by 20 plus and most of their outings this year. But he said before this game, that we feel like we're playing better and our time is coming. And certainly they've battled. It hasn't been pretty on the offensive end, still shooting 23% but causing problems for Iowa State. 19 forced turnovers, and this is exactly the type of game Jackson State wanted. Absolutely, and right now their best offense is just getting shots up and then going and attack the offensive board. They've get, getting multiple second chances here. Um, but again, it's that defense yep. that's keeping them in the game. 12 offensive rebounds for Jackson State, to your point. Yeah, 11 of 48 from the floor, 1 of 8 from 3, yet Jackson State only down 10. Both teams have more turnovers than made field goals. <laughs> and under 7 minutes to play. And again, we're starting to see that free throw discrepancy uh, inch up there um, in, in Jackson State's favor. Evans. Quinlan's. Provide a little bounce, but offensive foul called on Quinlan. Coleman lands, takes another charge for Iowa State. Good job by the senior, Jalen Coleman lands. A good, again, good, good sacrifice of the body. See if Iowa State can get some additional separation. Leading by 10, Bolton's gone the entire way. Play all 40 minutes against West Virginia as well. But Bolton has only scored six points. He's only taken five shots. Johnson off a big screen. Lost the ball. Six on the shot clock. Bolton with two. A deep three. And the rebound to Jackson State. Jarrett being assertive. Tate. A two. And Young gets another rebound. He has five. Jackson State's been doing a good job of getting Iowa State off their, off their feet on the defensive end and then attacking. Coleman lands. That one misses. Off of Iowa State to Jackson State. Iowa State, one of its last seven. Jackson State, one of its last eight. And did not think we'd see a combined 78 points at the 539 mark. Well, Brent, unfortunately, I've, I've seen one of these games here within the past week as uh, my high school team squeaked out a 35 to 32 victory Tuesday night. <laughs> That's solid coaching. <laughs> yeah, it's just, oh, I, I need to coach up a little better shooting, I think. <laughs> and for Iowa State, it's really, I mean, 3 of 11 from 3 is obviously not great, but it's been the turnovers and even getting quality shots as inside as Walker got tied up with Tate and now free throws, or that wasn't Tate, that's Darian Wilson. Free throws for Jackson State with the clock stopped at 529. This is where Iowa State has to be careful that uh, they don't put Jackson State at the line too much and allow them to get easy points when they're struggling to shoot from the field so much. 85% from the line at least for Jackson State. 11 of 13. One on one. Misses. And Young high to clear it. Coleman lands trapped. Over to Bolton. Steve Prome calls out a play. Bolton puts the head down. Coleman lands attacks. A little shove off and gets it to go. Veteran move for Jalen Coleman lands. He has 11, joins Young in double figures. Great job of uh, driving, getting to that logo and, and pulling up, playing off of two feet. Under five minutes remaining. 
deep three for Jarrett. Goes. Tristan Jarrett knocks down his second three. He's going to continue to fire. He has 16 points. Lead down to nine. Jarrett, four of 15 from the floor. And it's a nine-point game. It's been a quiet 16 points, but they're going to need him down the stretch here to, to keep shooting. Walker's played a lot of minutes. Bolton the three, top of the arc. Rebound Young and the follow. Big two-hand stuff for Solomon Young. Gets the 1,200 or so in attendance on their feet. A three by Jarrett to follow. No, and a Hicks foul on the rebound. And free throws for Iowa State. Cyclones stay in the bonus. Solomon Young with the play of the afternoon off the Bolton miss. Yeah, just no checkout by anybody from Jackson State. Crashes hard. Really a great all-around game from Solomon Young. And going against a uh, very good competition in the SWAC preseason defensive player of the year. Dubar gets free throws. A one-on-one -on -one still, and Dubar calmly knocks down the first. Darlin Stone Dubar, averaging three and a half points, three and a half rebounds. Started the last four for Iowa State. And splits the pair. It's good to see for Iowa State here coming down the stretch that you have a couple freshmen on the floor playing you know, really uh, meaningful minutes. Great experience for them. I have to check the exact tally, but Walker has played his career high for sure. McKinnis shot comes up short, and Coleman lands, fights him off for the rebound. Cyclones up 12 with possession. You know, Walker's played 18 minutes, which is a career high off the bench. Bolton to Walker. And out of bounds to Iowa State. With 3.22 remaining, Iowa State leads it by 12, trying to close out Jackson State. Back for the finish on Big 12 now. Iowa State leads it 49-37 over Jackson State. Cyclones back at it on Tuesday against Chicago State. That's a noon tip, a rare Tuesday noon tip against the Cougars of Chicago State. And then it's back into Big 12 action with Baylor on January 2nd. And Solomon Young has been very effective today. Solomon graduated a couple of weeks ago with his degree in hospitality management in the College of Human Sciences at Iowa State. He wants to own a restaurant someday. In fact, Clay, he interned at Aunt Maud's in Ames. Oh. You ever have a meal at Maud's? I've had plenty there. That is a uh, great dining. Enjoyed his experience there, and uh, Solomon looking to get in the hospitality industry when his career is done. Bolton from 14 feet misses, and the rebound, and a foul called as Young battles, and uh, will get free throws as he was fouled on the rebound. That's just a great job for, by Solomon Young being active on the offensive boards, forcing the foul there. Young gets two free throws. That's the 10th team foul on Jackson State. The lead at 49-37 with 3-11 remaining. And two-shot foul. Amy Bonner corrects everybody. Had some problems with that, understanding how many free throws we're going to get. Cyclone <laughs> fans remember a certain situation like that down in Kansas in 2004. Mm. Young makes the first free throw. Not to bring up bad that's, memories. Yeah, th that's a memory that doesn't need to be brought <laughs> up. Young gets a second. Makes them bold. Solomon Young has 18 points to go along with eight rebounds. Also, by the way, a career high for Jalen Coleman lands in rebounds today with eight. He has played substantial minutes today as well. Coleman lands defense here on Jarrett. Does a nice job. The tip, no good. And it's Walker chasing down. And Iowa State possession. Good hustle by the Iowa State freshman. Lead at 14 with 2.56 remaining. Both teams really battling on the glass. There's a lot of bodies down there getting after it. 
You know, Brent, before I forget, it's nice to see some fans in here uh, compared Absolutely. to the last time we were in here. It, it does make a difference. I was allowed about 1,400 fans, and I'd say somewhere in that neighborhood again today, and it just totally changes the atmosphere of Hilton Coliseum. Even that few of people can help. But Coleman lands three from the corner, knocks it down. Iowa State leads it by 17, 54-37 with 2.25 remaining. This is an 8-0 run over the last two minutes as Iowa State dealing the knockout blow. Tough move in the paint goes for Ken Evans. So Evans draws Jackson State to 15, 54-39 with 2.05 to play. Dubar to a walker look, doesn't fire, instead drives in, floats it over the top, no, and Young clubs the rebound out to Jackson State. It's Jarrett with a two-on-two. Spins on Bolton, nowhere to go. A deep look, rims out, and Coleman Lands has it. Career high, ninth rebound for Jalen Coleman Lands. If he gets one more, he has his first career point and rebound double-double. Coleman Lands a deep two, got it. Coleman Lands heating up. 16 points for the senior from Indianapolis and a lead at 56-39. Jalen just uh, kind of took this game over here the last couple minutes. And I think Iowa State, as Steve Prohm takes a timeout, probably gets a chance to get some other guys in there as Rajir Bolton has stayed on the floor the entire way. Coleman Lands has played 35 minutes this afternoon. And again, the lead at 56 to 39 with 126 remaining. And Clay, sometimes you, if you play a tempo like this, you, you gotta win ugly. And I'd say that's been the case for Iowa State today, but credit Iowa State for at least sticking their nose in there and battling. A absolutely, and, and to become a good team, you have to be able to win games at a fast pace. And then when somebody comes in and slow, tries to slow it down, you have to be able to grind out victories that way too. Uh, so this is, these are games that will help them in the long run when they get to different styles in the Big 12. This is the fewest points Iowa State has allowed in a game since the Southern Miss game last year. Iowa State allowed 45 points. I think you have to go deep in the archives to find the last time Iowa State held somebody under 40, which is where Jackson State stands right now at 39 points. 56-39 with 126. And the defense is not the... The easiest thing to play, and I was it's allowed over 70 points per game this season, but this will help the average. Holding Jackson State to 23% from the floor, 18% from three. Cyclones have forced 14 turnovers. You know, and as a player, you, you typically want to come in and get up and down and uh, get a lot of points and shots on the board. Um, but this is really encouraging that the, the defense for Iowa State is coming this far. You can kind of see it the other night at West Virginia how they played a lot more physical and were a lot more active, and it's carried over into today. Jackson State continues its long road trip. As next on the uh, docket is Northern Alabama. And here comes a drive for Evans. He lost the ball into McKinnis over Foster in a foul. Foul on Coleman lands, so McKinnis gets on the board. He has 13 points and gets a free throw. Yeah, I actually thought that was a really good contest by Xavier Foster there. Uh, looked like McKinnis was going up to try to, to flush it. Um, Foster blocked it, and it just kind of rolled off both their fingers in. Foul called on Coleman Lands, not on Foster, so a free throw for McKinnis. And he is going to be a force in the swack. Misses the free throw, a rebound to Bereef Smith. McKinnis fouled by Foster. And two more free throws for Javius McKinnis, the 6'7 junior out of Brandon, Mississippi, which is just down the road from Jackson. Just discussing in high school, he got cut from his ninth grade team, but just slowly worked on his game. Did not get offers from really anybody else but Jackson State and has turned himself into a first team all conference guy. That's a fantastic story. You know, that's something you, you, like me in high school, talking to my kids, just keep working at your game, getting better, better, good things will happen. And Wayne Brent, the Jackson State head coach, has a knack for discovering talent and said, I saw the potential in McKinnis when he came to one of my camps and said, we, this guy's got a chance, and that has paid off. 
McInnes makes both free throws. Lead at 13 with 114 remaining. Cyclones have Blackwell, Walker, Dubar, and Foster, all four freshmen in the game. Getting a little bit of glimpse of the future here. Here is Walker off the Foster screen. Blackwell to Dubar, but a block called on Jackson State. Now free throws up coming for Dudley Blackwell. Blackwell had a career high in minutes on Friday against West Virginia, and he's got a diverse set to his game. That's 50-50 call, goes Iowa State's way. Nice to see one actually called a block, though. You, you were just, <laughs> we just brought that up earlier in the half. Yep, yep. Two free throws for Blackwell. And makes the first, the 6'6 freshman. Has a nice touch, can shoot it out to three-point territory but also has shown a knack for putting it on the floor and creating some offense as well. Jenkins into the game for Iowa State. Blackwell's second free throw goes. Lead up to 15 at 58-43. Under a minute. Jenkins got some uh, crunch time minutes over at uh, West Virginia. Kind of a defensive specialist type uh, off the bench for the Cyclones. No doubt. Defensive specialist here causes the miss for Jarrett. Jackson State gets the rebound. Another shot attempt for the Tigers. A tough three misses. Blackwell on the run out, and he's fouled. So Dudley Blackwell back to the free throw line. And Iowa State holding Jackson State to 43 points. We have to get Iowa State Sports Information Director Matt Schultz to get on the hook to see uh, when's the last time Iowa State held somebody to 43 or less. Free throws for Blackwell. Makes the first. Cyclones opponent Tuesday, Chicago State, is 0-8 on the year. They play Drake this afternoon. And Blackwell makes both. 17-point Iowa State lead. One last attempt for the Tigers. Jenkins on Jarrett. Around Foster, foul call. Mm. Really good job by Jenkins moving his feet and, and stay in front of uh, Jarrett. Foster picks up the foul. Jarrett, 16 points on 4 of 18 shooting, but he's been perfect at the free throw line. And makes the first. Foster's up to four fouls now in, in eight minutes. Do you ever have a game like that as a post? Uh, a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes these big guys get get in trouble when they go up to block a shot, and that arm, you know, the officials see the arm swinging kind of wildly. If he just goes up and uses his length and goes straight up, you know, he probably still blocks it and without fouling. Well, in my day, I didn't get a lot of action, but uh, I got to get your name in the box score, Clay. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Yeah. You get it. If you can't do anything else, you foul. Yeah. Get yourself in the box score. So you, another another free throw for Jarrett. You prefer a foul over a turnover, right? <laughs> that is correct. Because if you're fouling, That's, you're you're playing hard. Playing hard. <laughs> that coach is aggressive. <laughs> and makes one of two makes both at sixty to forty five. And Iowa State can run out the clock. The Cyclones are going to improve to two and four on the season. Next up Chicago State. Iowa State wins it over Jackson State. Sixty to 45. And Clay it was uh, not the prettiest game, but Iowa State gets a victory and now on to another contest Tuesday before back into the Big 12. Yeah, at this point in the season, you just want to stack up one victory after another and get ready for the long haul that is the Big 12 season. Cyclones to 2 and 4, win it by 15 over Jackson State. Both teams return to action on Tuesday. Jackson State travels to North Alabama and Iowa State back at Hilton Coliseum to face Chicago State. For Clay Edwards, I'm Brent Bloom saying so long from Hilton Coliseum. Final score, Iowa State 60, Jackson State 45. All games airing on ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.